that's also something I wanted you to just maybe explain to the first time buffalo hunter. What are the do's and don'ts, the basic do's and don'ts when preparing for a safari? It's all very intimidating. I know preparation takes place normally a year beforehand. It's all very exciting, but maybe you can just give them a little bit of a guide. Ammo, shot placement books, or whatever it is. Maybe you can just speak. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's a lot of... Uh there's a lot of information out there on shot placement and stuff and some very good good things but it's very important for the first time hunter to come out here that not everything is going to be standing completely broadside within range you know you're not going to be able to to always go for that perfect shoulder shot one third of the way up from the brisket type thing I mean that's that's what we talk about and that's where the shot placements are but you will see the kind of bush there is here sometimes uh, you're going to have to take shots off your knee, shooting under a bush or um, another, and it's not a favorite shot of mine, but it's one that is often taken in circumstances, is the frontal shot on a buffalo. A lot of people don't like taking those. Um, a lot of uh, injured buffalo come from that, but uh, realistically it's one of the shots that probably present themselves more often than not because if the buffalo knows you there he's inevitably going to turn and face you um, we can't judge buffaloes from the side only at some point they've got to be facing us so that we can see if they're mature enough and if it's what we're looking for you know um, and most importantly is i think for a first time hunter is not to set yourself any size and then possibly be disappointed because it didn't quite crack the size that you had in mind. I would say more importantly is really enjoy the hunt, you know, do a lot of tracking, follow the herds, follow the dugger boys, get into buffalo and then after six, seven, eight days of hard hunting, you've hunted them, you've looked over a lot, then, you know, let's find that old one that we think, oh, let's take him done what he's had to do, he's old, he's past his uh, prime, so to speak, and that to me is, is a proper hunt and what everybody should expect. Uh, when practicing coming to the hunt, would you recommend practicing off uh, a bipod, a tripod, or just to Yeah, of, of course, uh, the most important is to, to, to try and uh, eliminate the error of the rifle and the scope. So, so, so shoot on the bench, make sure your rifle is, is not going to be the problem. And then, and then practice on shooting sticks. It's very difficult uh, to be steady on shooting sticks if you haven't practiced on them. And I always like to tell people, um, hurry when it comes to a shot, hurry but don't rush. Um, because the more you're on the sticks, the more you've held your breath to take the shot, the more you're going to start shaking and moving. You know, all, all of that just comes through practice. I mean, the more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. Hurry but don't rush. Oh, quite a... Uh, Hopefully everyone understands that. <laughs> and um, another thing that's quite, I should let people know, is, is traveling with guns is becoming more and more of a mission, you know, trying to get paperwork sorted and basically some airlines not wanting to, to carry weapons. So uh, not bringing a rifle actually gives you more options uh, of getting here. Um, I do have very, very good rifles that guys are more than welcome to use uh, when they get here. All I ask for is just you know, the cost of ammunition. Um, it's a 375, built for me uh, by Dakota. It's a 375 H&H, built by a good friend of mine, Duke McCarr of Gulf Breeze. It has a Swarovski uh, Z6R in it, one and a half to 10 illuminated reticule. So it's good for leopard, it's good for, for lion, it's good for, it's, got, it's good for everything that you need. Uh, it's a very comfortable shooting rifle and I say, Leave your guns behind if it means easier travel and uh, you know what you have that you can use when you get here and hunt with me. We'll be chatting a little bit more throughout this, these uh, next 10, 7, 10 days of, of buffalo hunting and we'll try and get a bit of a do's and don'ts and to actually see the areas that Terry operates out of and the diversity and everything that goes with uh, a, a, a buffalo hunt and hopefully by the end of it you We'll put Terry Labatt as one of your options when thinking about coming on a safari to, to either Zimbabwe or to Africa, really.